The Olympic countdown has begun. In less than two weeks, Team USA will be seeking gold in Tokyo, Japan. In the Saitama Super Arena, they will be challenged by the world's best in the men's basketball and women's basketball tournaments. But tonight, the road to Tokyo begins in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is where the United States, a talented collection with a real leader in Greg Popovich, tremendous returning players, begin that quest for gold. NBC Sports and Team USA Basketball proudly presents the Road to Tokyo as the exhibition season and schedule begins here in Las Vegas as tonight Team Nigeria takes on the United States of America. Hello everybody, Bob Fitzgerald alongside Fran Fraschilla and Normally, you would have Team USA tour the United States and play a number of exhibitions for men and women. But this time around, training camp and all the games are here in Vegas. And it makes sense because there'll be five different Olympic teams on the men's side 
here training with the USA. They'll play some of those teams throughout the week, as will the women. And it's nice and self-contained, and we're indoors. That's a good thing. So when you look to build a team, you're looking for leadership. And so Greg Popovich has his most experienced Olympic player in Kevin Durant. KD is one of those players that is looking for his third gold medal. What makes him so special on the international stage? This guy loves the game. He's obviously a great talent, but NBA, summertime, pickup ball, he loves to play, and his game rubs off on his teammates. He will be one of the most prolific players to ever play Olympic basketball, and we know the talent he has. I just love the joy he has for the game, and especially Olympic basketball. 30 in the gold medal game in London, 30 in the gold medal game in Rio, and when it's all said and done, as he seeks his third gold medal to equal Carmelo Anthony, he may be the most decorated American. And I think all the scoring marks are going to go by the wayside. He'll be number one in every category. And what I love about him is he's brought some friends along to this party because the guys that have raised their hand for Jerry Colangelo and Greg Popovich, they want to play with Kevin Durant. Some of the newcomers are so interesting and the commitments are so spectacular for the United States. Dame Lillard in his first Olympics and then the relationship with Jason Tatum and Bradley Beal. These two guys grew up five minutes apart in St. Louis, same high school, Chaminade High School. They're going to get to be teammates for the second time in their careers. NBA All-Star Game was the first. There's nine first-time Olympians, and actually three of them are still playing in the NBA Finals, and so I'm very curious to see how this team comes together. What I love about this team is they have offensive firepower virtually at every position. They can put the ball in the basket. And so for Greg Popovich, the Air Force graduate, he's been an assistant on Olympic teams. This is his chance to run a team and win a gold medal and I know that he is looking forward to it. He goes against tonight one of his protégés in Mike Brown, who is trying to get Nigeria representing the entire continent of Africa to the medal stand. We've got two former NBA coaches of the year, and Mike Brown has a good group of young Nigerian players, many of them who are now in the NBA. This is going to be fun. Well, Nigeria has 16 active players. As we look at their starting lineups, KZ Akpala, Josh Kogi, Gabe Vincent, Ike Nwamu, and Precious Achua. The starting lineups brought to you by Nike. And for the United States, Bradley Beal and Damian Lillard in the backcourt with Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, and Bam Adebayo. And Nike bringing you those starting lineups as well. So the Olympic court is a little shorter, 91 feet instead of the 94 by 50. The ball is a little bit different. You will notice that. The circumference is just a little bit shorter. The three-point line is 21-1 instead of 23-9, but the, the international game is different. It is a little different. Believe it or not, it's a little more physical. And remember, the rule that I love is when the ball goes on the rim, anybody can either knock it into the basket or knock it off, but it's got to be on the rim first. Four 10-minute quarters as Damian Lillard handles and Team USA with the first possession. Put Akpala on Lillard initially. Bradley Beal attacking inside and he's fouled. Now, how do you put guys that are all-stars on all of their own individual teams into a collective? Well, I think that they've all decided that if they're going to play in this environment, they're going to play together. I think the big thing is that they don't overpass early, Bob. Out of bio, off back iron, and Precious Achua with the rebound. Now, Achua playing in the NBA. There's three members of the Miami Heat that are all part of this. And they're all on the court right now. Josh yeah. Kogi normally is not a point guard. He will handle a lot for Nigeria. This is Casey Akpala, the Stanford product. Shot clock down to five. Chua with Durant on him, stayed down on the pump fake, shot clock at one, and a 24-second violation. Defense, that's exactly what Team USA would love to see that cohesion. I exactly, and, and the thing about the defense is the principles are the same. These guys are well coached during the 82-game NBA season, so bringing them together defensively, not that difficult. Yeah, Casey Akpala, hey, welcome to the Olympics. Go guard Damian Lillard. <laughs> Nice. And there is Adebayo rolling and a beautiful feed inside. Bam is the perfect guy for this team because he's a multi-positional defender and he's going to rack the rim hard with those lob catches. 
This is Ike Nwamu. Outside Paula for three off iron. Bradley Beal catch and shoot three. Here comes Nigeria headed the other way. And Nwamu will set up Gabe Benson and he drops that in and they rely on him for most of their perimeter scoring. Yeah, I really like Gabe Benson. Young man out of Cal Santa Barbara who's uh, I think he's going to be a good, solid player for the Miami Heat. Well, Scoring and toughness. Yeah. Off of Tatum there. And they're going to get Jordan Nawara, who plays from the Milwaukee Bucks, and you may see Jaleel Okafor. They will be scorers for Nigeria in good. Tokyo. Yeah, I agree. Jordan Nawara was a scorer for this team in 2019 in China in the FIBA World Cup. Precious Achua. Here's a Kogi with the shot clock at 10. Josh Okogi hanging, firing, and dropping it in. And the guys that play in the NBA, as Okogi does for Minnesota, they, they've seen the other Team USA star. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be intimidated. The talent level's a little different, but the intimidation factor should not be there. Lillard fade, fire, and off iron. And for Nigeria, they're forcing tough shots, and they forced a turnover. And how about the speed they're getting up the court? And the lob to Achua a little too high. And here's KD the other way. And Durant will take the body bump. Just don't know how you guard someone at <laughs> seven feet tall. Who's <laughs> was that skill? Well, how about this little pick and roll action right here? A little miscommunication, and Pam Adebayo does what he does really well. He's he's one of the best screeners in the NBA this year, and that time he made the screen pay off, Bob. But defensively, there's no defensive three-second violation, so teams could sit in zones if they choose. He'll try to drop it back to Bam. Gets his own rebound, and Adebayo going up to hammer it. You know what's interesting about Bam is his dad is Nigerian, and so he could very well be on this other team. But uh, the way he's progressed in the NBA, I think he's he fits this USA team just right. Well, Akeem Olajuwon's Nigerian, and he actually <laughs> played for the United States. Yes, he did. Never played for Team Nigeria. Mike Nwamu rimming that out, tipped up and out, and the rebound battle out to Lillard in motion. Tatum on the trail. Tatum misfiring there. The team USA has had several practices here. Same with Nigeria, who held their training camp in Oakland, California, at the Warriors' old practice facility. Wamu with the shot clock at 10. Takes Durant off the dribble to flip it up and out. You see KD's length defensively challenging that shot. Yep, no doubt. KD is going to play a lot of four and five for this team. Lillard. Took a little body bump. Kogi pushing the other way. He's got numbers. And the kick out corner three. Yes. And I tell you right now, if you leave Gabe Vincent open, he can strike it. Well, and Mike Brown told us he wants them to get up the floor. Perfect example right there. So, with four minutes gone by for Team Nigeria, there's a confidence level. Mike Brown's got to be incredibly pleased. Durant with the fadeaway elbow jumper. You can't, you cannot, you just hope he misses. You're not going to defend that. Mike's not as pleased as he was about 20 seconds ago. <laughs> but I like what USA's doing. They're playing fast. They've missed some open shots, but these are the best in the world. You want them to play in a rhythm. So Vincent's hit a couple threes. They make it three yes. for three. And this yep. is where, in the international game, if you get a sniper rolling, he can carry a team. Oh, I agree. I just love Gabe Vincent, the way he's improved over time. G League coming off injuries. The near turnover. Tatum recovers. Shoot it. Tatum. Yes. See, they, they, you can be too unselfish, Bob. When you're open, if you're Tatum, Willard, Beal, let it fly. Early on, Nigeria, four of nine. Three threes. Nakoki all the way to the iron to flip it home. Oh, yeah, he is a tough, strong kid out of Georgia Tech. Still a young pup. And Abayo's worked on that mid-range and rims that home nicely. So you saw him roll on the pick and roll. Yep. This time pick and fade, and he hits the jumper. Well, there's a reason he got that big contract last summer. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Played in the finals a year ago. Amu from deep. Off back iron, and Precious Achua fighting for that rebound. It's not a backcourt because it was deflected. Kogi, up with the launch, and Tatum with the rebound. 
Bradley Beal second in the NBA in scoring behind Steph Curry, and he will get to the line. Our first stop with 418 remaining in the first. And for Team Nigeria, they have aspirations of being the first African country ever to stand on a medal podium. And the way Gabe Minson is shooting, building some confidence against the United States, who has firepower of their own as Jason Tatum drops it in. Nigeria up a deuce. Basketball and NBC Sports is brought to you by Nike. Nike, play new. And you've got new combinations coming onto the court here. Greg Popovich making some substitutions, but talk about holding people accountable. Even if the coaches for Team USA <laughs> step sideways, they've got to run liners. You know what? Look at Pop at 72 years old. Now, he was cut from the 1972 Olympic team after playing at the Air Force Academy. No wonder he can't run. I will tell you, though, my sources tell me that at 72, Greg Popovich did not finish last in the <laughs> liners. And there are two unnamed coaches that were lagging behind him. One of them coaches at Gonzaga. But we're <laughs> not going to tell you. Well, he was arm in arm with another guy that has a few championship rings. In the, we'll just, Bay, Area. In the Bay Area. So we'll leave that alone as Beal misses the free throw. But for Greg Popovich, this is... He loves basketball, he loves the United States, and he loves being around different teams and leading people. And that's yep. what he's done so well his whole life. Well, and he's waiting for this opportunity to be the coach of the United States Olympic team. So Caleb Agata just checking in, missing that shot there. So Caleb Agata has checked in, along yep. with Chemezi Metu and Epe Udo. Keep your United eye on number three, uh, Caleb Agata. He was the leading scorer in Israel this year. He's from uh, Canada, from Ottawa. He's gonna be in the NBA Summer League with the, with the Denver Nuggets. A lot of people in that USA training camp are anxious to see him. Damian Lillard dropping in the three. So Draymond Green and Zach Levine have checked in for the United States. I think Zach Levine can be a defensive stopper for this team. We know he can score, but he plays with great energy. Obi Emigano has checked in, and they're looking for ball handling for Team Nigeria. They started a Kogi, but who handles it? Who gets him into their sets? So Metu catch and shoot long. The rebound ricochets all the way out to him. It never hit iron, so a 24-second violation. It's a good little wrinkle right here. Watch Draymond Green with a great screen on the dribble handoff. And obviously, if you give Dame Lillard that much room, that's almost a layup for him. Zach Levine was beyond ecstatic when Jerry Colangelo called him. So excited to be on this Olympic team, as was Draymond, who misfires there. Draymond and Kevin Durant were both on the team in Rio. Kevin Love played in London. But otherwise, you have nine new United States members of Team USA. 
You know what I love about Zach Levine? We know that the uh, Chicago Bulls are growing. They're getting better under Billy Donovan. Zach Levine around this level of high-caliber superstar talent, not just on the court but off court, I think is going to benefit tremendously from this next month. Epe Udo playing professionally in China. He has been in the NBA for multiple years. Kayla Bagata, yep. like you said, you're, you're scoring in a high-level international league in the three-point shot. We saw Gabe Vincent and now Agata strike Yes, ball. yeah, he's a young player, Agata. Not heard of him before, but watch out for him. Durant off iron. Jemese Metu plays for the Sacramento Kings. Yep, former USC Trojan. What's going on? Okongwu, Mobley, and Metu at USC. They're, yeah. they're, they got big guys. Sure do. Nice steal by Durant. And Raymond will push. Jeremy Grant avoided the turnover. Lillard had that three block, but stayed with the play to lay it up and in. Stanley Okoye thought he made a great play with the block. And then Dave Lillard stayed with it. I think he was mad that shot got blocked, so then he went and got his own <laughs> rebound to lay it in. Exactly. There's Agata again. But Caleb Agata. He's played in Spain. This is his first Olympics. You mentioned his play last season in Israel. Raymond Green muscling that home. Caleb played at the University of Ottawa back in 16. He was the Canadian Defensive Player of the Year. And he says, you mentioned that, a good start to his career in Europe. Shot clock down to nine. Here's Agata again. Out of three this time. And he saw Grant come over, but he stayed with it. Draymond knocked it away off iron. Now Magano missing. And a little push foul from behind on Levine. And take a look at this young man. Caleb Magata, 26 years old. He's a late bloomer. Mentioned earlier, he led the Israeli league, a pretty good league. He's scoring 22 points a game. And Bob, interestingly about those threes, he's more of a mid-range scorer. Mm. So showing that range, I know the Denver Nuggets probably are excited right now that he'll be in summer league. You know, if you go back to the Seoul Olympics in 1988, you had all college men for the United States, and they, they came home with the bronze. This is a, a veteran, really men's type of tournament now. And I don't know if it started with the Argentinians, but in the Lithuanians, even the youngest Team USA members, Jason Tatum, everybody's got some years on them before you make an Olympic team. Yeah, you know, to, to make the, that point, to drive it home further, Mike Brown told us yesterday that guys like Casey Akpala and Josh Akogi, they're good players, but they may be too young right now yeah. to really carry a team like this, even though they're in the NBA. Stanley Okoye is 30 years old, dropping in that second free throw. So Nigeria more than competitive with a two-point lead. Coming up on the final minute here. Again, four ten-minute quarters. Draymond Green having that blocked. The push ahead to Okoye. And Magano. And in transition, Nigeria's had success. You know, Mike told us yesterday, we can't play half court with these guys. I love my athletes. We're going to get up and down. Zach Levine having it knocked away. Draymond Green will get to the line. So Draymond Green, former Defensive Player of the Year, a three-time All-Star, a three-time champion for the Golden State Warriors. And he and Adebayo will play the center spot along with Kevin Love. Yeah, and that's okay this time around because when you think of the Olympics, Gasol, the Gasol brothers on their way down, still good players, not what they were. No Jokic for Serbia this year. Rudy Gobert would be the one big guy the USA has to worry about a little bit in Tokyo. Well, the loss in the World Cup was to France and Rudy Gobert. Yes. Who does the United States play in their first game in Tokyo? They play France. But you know what? Rudy's going to have to guard away from the basket, I believe. You'll see Kevin Durant play some five. Kevin Love. So the final half minute here of the first. Okoye tried to turn the corner. Beal picked his pocket. And Jason Tatum pushes. Tatum will rise and drop in at three. How good is that footwork? 
But for Nigeria, by the first 10 minutes, you know, they want to be on a medal stand. This is the type of performance. You can play with the United States. You can play with anyone. Oh, I agree. They've been impressive. And Magano rattling that out, and that will do it for quarter number one. So for Team USA, working on combinations for Nigeria, working on confidence, and so far so good for both squads. Competitive here on a Saturday night in Vegas. Quarter number one in the books in a tight one. Hi, I'm Kelsey Plum, and I'm from Poway, California. Plum, crossed her, and she sauced her. When I put on the jersey, first of all, I think I represent, obviously, the U.S., you know? It's a lot bigger than just me. It's really about the name on the front, not the back. Um, I represent young girls out there that want to be me someday. So I think that there's a lot of groups that I try to uh, put forth uh, that effort and intensity and the performance level. So, you know, I try to make them proud. Hi, I'm Alicia Gray, and I'm from Centerfield, Georgia. Gray, she got it off safety. Centerfield's a real small town, so almost everybody knows, like, everybody. They just saw Gray. She's a blur. Nice hezzy, better defense. I'm really like a role model, especially like female wise. I'm the first WNBA player from my hometown, so I just set an example to all, like, the, the younger generation. I would say, like, most importantly, I'm representing my mom and my dad. Just seeing them sacrifice so much for me when they could be doing something else, but they was able to cater to my needs. So most importantly, I really play for my parents because they just sacrificed so much for me. Good tempo up and down for Nigeria. It's got to be fun to see Mike Brown. What are you looking for combination-wise early with Team USA? I think, you know, since this is the first exhibition game, we're just kind of, you know, getting loose and uh, getting comfortable out there. And uh, we're not looking at combinations yet. This isn't necessarily the starting lineup that we're going to see going forward. We're just uh, trying to get our legs underneath us. Steve, what would be one offensive objective and one defensive objective tonight? Uh, I think rebounding, Fran. You saw in that first quarter, we got outboarded big time, so we're going to have to be a good rebounding team, and I'd like to see a little more pace offensively, but got to rebound in order to push the ball. Thanks, Coach. We right. appreciate it. Thank you. So the United States with a one-point lead as we begin the second quarter. Bob Fitzgerald, Fran Fraschella with you from Vegas. The first of five Team USA men's exhibition games. Play Australia on Monday, Argentina on Tuesday. And a beautiful steal by Zach Levine to begin the second. Draymond Green looking for a cutting Bradley Beal. Roofed up top. Jeremy Grant missing the three. And so for Nigeria, they continue to rotate players in. Chime Moniki has checked in, along with Caleb Agata. Chime played in France last year in Orleans. And Epe Udo losing that out of bounds. Now, for... The United States, they have their 12 players. We mentioned nine, but then three are playing in the finals. For Mike Brown, he's got 16 guys. He still has to cut four more guys. Yeah, he's had a, he had a big training camp, as you know, Bob, in Oakland. He brought almost 50 players to the training camp. But I love this level of athlete he's put together out here. Levine misses everything. We'll call it a pass. And Draymond Green able to flip it up and in. You mentioned it earlier. I think one key for this Nigeria team is going to be guard play and figuring out who can handle, who can create. Mie Oni out of Yale missing that three there. And the Utah Jazz, former Ivy League Player of the Year. So Tatum with an ISO. Epe Udo didn't come, and they will flip it up and in and count the basket. <laughs> Arebu did everything he could to uh, stem the tide of Tatum 
just bowling them over. Take a look right now. See, that's the theme of basketball. In the NBA, I'm not sure you'd get away with that, that, that kind of physical play. But one thing USA has done over the course of the last 15 years, Bob, is understand FIBA basketball and embrace it. And I love the fact that Jason Tatum uses physicality right there. And he is the youngest Olympian, the two-time All-Star, and, and a couple 50-point games to end the <laughs> NBA season. And the Celtics for Tatum. We've got a few guys out here that can go for 50 <laughs> on this USA team. That's for sure. <laughs> Beautiful drive and finish. And How right about now, this guy? I tell you, Caleb Agata. <laughs> hey, Mike Brown's looking for one of his 12. He's making a strong impression. Let me tell you something. We've already, he's worked out for one other NBA team already. I will not divulge that, but uh, that it's a great it's great to see a kid that can come out of nowhere like this. Levine had the big Udo switched on him and yes. took him right to the bucket. I'll say this, Bob. I think Levine and Jeremy Grant are going to have a huge effect on this team, and I think there's going to be a game in Tokyo where defensively. They are really going to shine. They're so multi-positional. Moniki flipping it up and out and out of bounds. It will remain Nigeria ball. Chima Moniki is interesting because he really grew up mostly in Australia. And had he not chosen to play with Nigeria, now we don't know if he's going to make this team. My friends down under tell me that this was a kid that would have had a chance to play for the Boomers someday. You know, he's lived on five continents in his life, which is pretty amazing. His hometown is Canberra, Australia. I think mom and dad are diplomats, right? For Nigeria, as they move it around, and they're finding catch and shoot. That's a reg boo yeah. hitting the three, and then the steal by a Kogi. If you're a Pac-12 fan, you may remember uh, Iger Rebu from Washington State. Jeremy Grant striping yep. that three. Jeremy coming off a 22-point-a-game season for the... Detroit Princeton. He was second and most improved voting in the NBA. They feed Udo when he'll flip it up and in. F.A. Udo eventually drafted by the Golden State Warriors to play with Utah and Milwaukee and played professionally in China last year. He is a former Baylor Bear. And so another steal. So Nigeria defensively is Mieoni. Threw it behind Moniki, but Clearly, the emphasis of getting transition for the D-Tigers has been on display. I agree, Bob. And when they get to Tokyo, if they play this way, they're in a they're in a pool that's not impossible. Australia, Germany, and Italy. This style of play could give some teams trouble. So Draymond Green will sit. Bradley Beal, Kevin Love's first playing time with Tatum, Zach Levine, and Jeremy Grant. And as Steve Kerr said, this, this isn't combination time yet. This is... Break a sweat, play together. Bradley Beal sent away. And out of bounds, it'll be Nigeria ball. Brad Bradley just said, wait a minute. In the NBA, that's two free throws. <laughs> well, do you think that the level of physicality is allowed more incidental yes. versus illegal contact? Yes, it is. And I, the, these guys on the USA team that have played internationally, they know that already. Kevin Love with the foul. Kevin Love was on the Olympic team in 2012 and won a gold medal in London. But he'd been banged up and injured, and initially people asked Greg Popovich and Jerry Colangelo about having Kevin Love. He said, you need a center who can shoot a three. I mean, it's a different game internationally. And, and, and when you think about that first game against France, having a guy like him that can step out at the three-point line and bring Rudy Gobert away from the hoop could be critical. You also only get five fouls internationally, so you may need multiple fouls from bigs. Yes. So out of bio, Draymond Green, Kevin Love would be the the fives or the bigs if you want but like you said Jeremy Grant or even Kevin Durant may play center at some point yep when you look at that 12 teams as we you and I are starting to do really go bear for one guy that I think of that could cause problems inside but uh not quite the United States is going to use a timeout here with 629 remaining in the first half really entertaining first half the green and white the future is bright says Mike Brown
It's up four with six and a half remaining in the first half. Kevin Love, the five-time All-Star, a champion with Cleveland in 2016 for the Cavaliers, and a gold medal winner in the 2012 Olympics. As a rebounder, 53 straight double-doubles in 2010-11. And when you're playing with Kobe and you're playing with Durant, Kevin Love was a factor on the glass and also from distance. Yeah, I think this is great. I think Jerry Colangelo and Greg Popovich made a wise decision. First of all, he looks great. He's healthy. And I'll go back even further, Bob, 2010 in Istanbul, the coming out party for Steph Curry, Kevin Love, and, of course, Kevin Durant. He's paid his dues on USA Basketball, Jerry Colangelo said. We're going to give this guy a shot. Also, too, it's not bad having a veteran with something to prove. No doubt about it. So Kevin Love is certainly motivated, guarding Precious Achua right now. That is Michael Benege missing from deep. Hey, Nigeria's bringing in a lot of shooters because Benege is certainly capable. Well, they, they look the part. I'm impressed with them. Mike Brown's done a really good job. Zach Levine. Is it different 23-9 versus 21-1, or to the great shooters, it doesn't matter? No, I don't think it matters. It really doesn't. I, I know this. It's a comfort level. You know that it's a shorter line, and you're already a great shooter at the NBA level. This is the United States' biggest lead as they push it to seven. The ISO Achua here. Love gives no ground at all. Shot clock at three for Kevin Love moved his feet. I don't think he got it off. And didn't hit iron either. And in international ball, you don't have a stoppage on the 24 second. They don't want to take away the advantage. Keep on playing. So Love, he leaned in to try to get a foul there. <laughs> this is not Cleveland, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. A little show and go. And Love with the foul. This is what I love about this USA team is the firepower. You've got multiple guys on this team that average 27 points a game in the NBA or more. And this kid, Zach Levine, I say kid because he's one of the younger players still on this team. He made 13 threes in a game, which yes. is second best behind Klay Thompson's 14 in a game. You know, people think about Zach Levine as just a dunker. Oh, uh, man. He's a 39% career three-point shooter. And I think his energy level is going to rub off on the defensive end. I tell you, they're going to the Sachua Kevin Love matchup a lot without much success. So the United States midway through this second quarter. Remember, 10 minute quarters. A little different than the 48 minute NBA game. Lillard from deep. Too easy. Hey, you can cross the international date line. It will always be Dame time. It won't matter. Believe. You watch him with the Blazers. Uncanny. I think that international date line is a little shorter than the NBA line. <laughs> yeah, that might be it. Casey Agpala with an open three, and Achua will track it down. Agpala again on the reload, and here comes Tatum. The nice thing is make and take. Everybody that gets a rebound can push it, but you're not going to want turnovers like that. Well, listen, this should not surprise anybody in green right now. This is really a chip shot for Dane. That's a rhythm three from slightly beyond the NBA line. No, the, the way Lillard and Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and Zach Levine and Kevin Durant have expanded the geometry of the court, 35-footers are not bad shots, depending on the skill level of these guys now. And, and Bob, you and I talked about this at lunch. Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, we think of great shooters being international guys. No. Count, they be the basketball at the, at the USA grassroots level now. It's more about jump shooting than it is dunks. Credit those guys. Skill level is high. Gabe Vincent, nice. beautiful pass yes. to Noamu. Yep. The draw and kick, and you talk about cohesion. Noamu cut to the basket as Vincent began the drive. Yeah, that's what we call a 45 degree cut. When you see that baseline drive, you're in that slot. Get to the rim. Bradley Beal, off iron there. Kevin Love keeping it alive, but couldn't quite save it. Take a look at this, Bob. If you watch the Suns uh, over the last few weeks, Mikel Bridges is great at this. Look at this cut right down the lane from that what we call the weak side slot because the defense all turns and watches the ball. And a nice find by Gabe Vincent, who continues to impress us. We'll get back to that. Who handles the ball? Who's a play creator for Nigeria? We've seen shooters. We've seen size. 
Vincent can hit threes, and there's another one. You know, he did not shoot the ball well for Miami this year, but Mike Brown really likes what he's doing. All right, now Zach Levine took a spill there, and at this juncture, that's the last thing you would want, particularly with the Olympics less than two weeks away. you got to keep an eye on any player that would have any kind of significant problem, and the twist of the left ankle as he went down there. Well, we joke about breaking ankles, and we certainly don't want to see that, but... Uh, Looks like Zach's walking it off, but a terrific shot fake by Gabe Vincent. At the end of the finals, you will have Devin Booker and Chris Middleton. A, a long with Drew Holiday as Durant puts that in. But until then, you know, Zach Levine's a key part of your off-guard rotation. Josh Akogi with Tatum on him. Achua set that high screen. Akogi is not the, the shooter. He wants no. to initiate the guys like Gabe Vincent. And Vincent off back iron. Durant had that knocked away. Nice. Akogi to Achua and then ricocheting around to Bradley Beal. So USA seven point lead in the ball inside three minutes remaining in the first half. We're going to talk to Jerry Colangelo at halftime, the managing director for Team USA. He's in his final Olympic Games. Out of bio, couldn't quite extend. Trying to score on his teammate. Nwamu right in the middle of the break. He will launch. I'll tell you what, if the whole Olympics has his up and down tempo, how much fun would this be to watch? <laughs> uh, Nigeria wants to play this way. Lillard fouled on the pass. So the torch will be passed in Tokyo. Jerry Colangelo, 16 years as the managing director, and the incomparable Grant Hill will be taking over. He's his assistant right now. And I think Team USA basketball will be in tremendous hands. Well, first of all, Jerry has done an amazing job. He took over in 2005. He hired Coach K and then Greg Popovich and Grant Hill. He's a former Olympian. He understands what this is all about, USA basketball. Durant had that knocked away. Here comes Vincent again. Vincent wears Namdi on his back. His full name is, is Namdi. But Gabe is more the anglicized version of it. And he's a Modesto kid. Yep. Yep. Cal Santa Barbara Gauchos. He, he got injured his junior year at Cal Santa Barbara. Tried to come back early. Didn't play as well as a senior. But this is one of those guys, Bob, you see it every year in the league grinds his way into a good role from virtually out of nowhere. Well, think all the Miami Heat guys with Gabe Vincent and Akpala and Precious yep. Achua. That's, I mean, that Eric Spolstra has been coaching the select team, but he's got three of his other yeah. players here as Achua misses from deep. If you play for the Miami Heat, you are not immune to sweating. Uh, no. Lillard rattled that out. The Miami Heat would tape up for shoot-arounds. That's <laughs> all you need to know. <laughs> So the final 100 seconds of the first half. And a banked in three. I do not think that was uh, clearly directed by no. Nwamu, but it will count the same. They post up Durant. And met up top by Achua. What a block. That has the arena buzzing. KD elongated to hammer it down. And Precious Achua said no. I love this kid's energy. Young man out of Memphis. The Miami Heat took him because they love his intensity. And this is why. Oh, no way, KD. So Nigeria earning the respect of the United States. Down four with a minute 15 and a half.
Tatum with nine points in the first half, and it was the Tatum injury in the World Cup after the U.S. had gone five and zero. Oh. Tatum gets injured. They lose to France, then they lose to Serbia. And Greg Popovich is awfully glad to have Jason Tatum one more time. Exactly. He they expected him to be the go-to scorer at the end of the Olympics when they got to the knockout round. He hurt his ankle, and he is excited about being back. And as you mentioned earlier, he is becoming quickly one of the great young players in the NBA. Yeah, he is the youngest member of Team USA, but when you think about tying Larry Bird's all-time scoring record with his 60 against San Antonio, anytime you're in a sentence as a Celtic with Larry Bird, that's usually a good thing. And when you're 22 years old, it makes it even better <laughs> if you're a Celtics fan. So a minute 15 remaining in the first half. Hey, by the way, congrats to Epe, excuse me, uh, Ime Yudoka, the new Celtics coach, who, by the way, is Nigerian. And a former assistant under Greg Popovich. That's exactly right. Yep. So out of the timeout, Iwamu able to hit that. And so Mike Brown, he has got to be so thrilled with this first half. This kid, Iwamu, played in Russia last year. And with the size of Akpala on Lillard. I, and now here is Tatum to go impressive. against Nwamu. Yeah, they're impressive. It's an 11-2 Nigeria run, and Tatum, like a lot of veterans, will get to the line to try to slow that run. This kid played in Samara last year, which, believe me, is nowhere near Moscow. But they pay well. Well, And Mike Brown likes it. Ike Nwamu, you're talking about Cleveland State, Mercer, a year here at UNLV. Westchester Country Day High School in High Point, North Carolina, the Sioux Falls Sky Force, the Heat Summer League team, and the Fort Wayne Mad Ants. And that's why he could go to Russia and be okay. <laughs> so Jason Tatum. Now, now, do you see similarities with Tatum and Durant? Yes, yes, because I think Kevin is the better athlete of the two, and he's longer. But what I love about Jason Tatum from the day he got into the league and really the day he came out of high school, he's so fundamentally sound offensively. I just think small forwards, if you were describing or building one yeah. in a lab, I mean, you'd get Durant first and Tatum would be a close second. I would agree with that. Although you might go with that LeBron James guy, whatever <laughs> position you want to call that. He doesn't have a position. Durant off front iron. And then Vincent is fouled in the backcourt. Yeah, for LeBron, I don't know if he's done with the Olympics, but he was awfully good for Team USA in many other iterations. And you'll get a timeout with 19.3. So the United States lead at three for the final possession of the first half, who's coming up next. It's not just the colors, or the letters, or the medals. It's the places, the commitment, and the journey. We have one more year than expected. When we represent, it's not just one of us we're playing for. It's, it's all, all of us, of us. together. together. injured heading into the Olympics. You're less than two weeks away from being in Tokyo. Exactly. And uh, great to see him back out there. Seventh leading scorer in the league this year. By the way, trying to become the fourth Chicago Bull to win a gold medal. Some guy named MJ did it. That Jordan guy. Yep. Pippen and uh, Jimmy Butler in, that, in the uh, Rio Olympics. So Gabe Vincent dropping in the free throw. And this was the play. Watch his left ankle on the land right there. And the tweak, but I don't know if he got full weight on it. And they test it out, they bring it back to the bench where they get some really good sign. 
So the free throws, one out of two. And shot clock off. The United States will play for the final possession here. Bradley Beal on the show and go. Beal with a tough lefty flip. And Nigeria once again with a stop. Highly competitive. And now Beal just taking an assessment of all the limbs and body parts as he gets up. But for Mike Brown, what a first half for Nigeria. And for the United States, flashes as well. And this is exactly what both, both coaching staffs would want. Yeah, exactly. Pop's just playing guys, seeing, figuring things out. Nothing really urgent. But on the Nigeria side, Mike Brown has got to absolutely love the energy and effort and the way they push the basketball. Well, Jason Tatum was nice enough to, to stop and his nine points in the first half. And Jason, give us an idea of what that first half felt like. A lot of transition, very high energy. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot going on. <laughs> uh, first game, you know, it's our first game playing together, trying to get a, a rhythm, uh, trying to get a feel for the game, for each other, you know, trying to, you know, get in a flow, get in shape. Uh, so we try to figure a lot of things out. Hey, Jason, you had a taste of this at 19 before you got injured. Can you tell if there's a difference from a physicality standpoint with the rules, NBA and FIBA? Yeah, it's, it's a lot different. Uh, the way the game is officiated, um, the rules, you know, you can stay in the paint on defense, you know, knock the ball off the rim. Uh, all things that we have to pay attention to and just help each other out. Uh, you know, if you see somebody doing something, you just try to help them out because we all uh, learn at the same time. Well, you had 11 in the first half. You can score in any country, anywhere. It's not going to matter. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> we appreciate you stopping, Jason. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Jason Tatum with us. We're going to talk to Jerry Colangelo, the managing director of USA Basketball at halftime here in Vegas. Highly competitive with the United States lead, a deuce, as we hit the break. And a really entertaining game with Nigeria showing very well. <laughs> nice. And there is out of Ayo rolling and a beautiful feed inside. And Wamu will set up Gabe Benson and he drops that in. And Precious Achua. Here's a Kogi with the shot clock at 10. Josh Kogi hanging, firing, and dropping it in. Durant with the fadeaway elbow jumper. You can't, you cannot, you just hope he misses. You're not going to defend that. Love Gabe Vincent, the way he's improved over time. G League coming off injuries. The near turnover. Tatum recovered. Good. Tatum, yes. four of nine. Three threes. And a Kogi all the way to the iron to flip it home. Oh, yeah, he is a, a lot of people in that USA training camp are anxious to see him. Damian Lillard dropping in the three in the NBA for multiple years. Caleb Pagata, yep. like you said, you're, you're scoring in a high-level international league. League player of the year. So Tatum with an iso. Epeudo didn't come, and they will flip it up and in and count the basket. <laughs> few guys out here that can go for 50 <laughs> on this USA team. That's for sure. <laughs> Beautiful drive and finish. And How right about now, this guy? I tell you, Caleb got it. <laughs> Mike Brown's look. It's a great. It's great to see a kid that can come out of nowhere like this. Levine had the big Udo switched on him and yes. took him right to the bucket. I'll say this, Bob. I think Levine and Jeremy Grant. Is convinced he's certainly capable. Well, they they look the part. I'm impressed with them. Mike Brown's done a really good job. Zach Levine. Is it different? 23-9 versus 21. No different than the 48-minute NBA game. Lillard for deep. Too easy. Hey, you can cross <laughs> the international date line. Credit those guys. Skill level is high. Gabe Vincent. Nice. Beautiful pass yes. to Noamu. Yep. The draw and kick. And you talk about.
It's not just the colors or the letters or the medals. It's the places, the commitment, and the journey. We have one more year than expected. When we represent, it's not just one of us we're playing for. It's it's all all of us. us. Together. Hi, I'm Kelsey Plum, and I'm from Poway, California. Plum, crossed her. And she sauced her. When I put on the jersey, first of all, I think I represent, obviously, the U.S., you know. It's a lot bigger than just me. It's really about the name on the front, not the back. Um, I represent young girls out there that want to be me someday. So I think that there's a lot of groups that I try to uh, put forth uh, that effort intensity and the performance level. So, you know, I try to make them proud. Hi, I'm Alicia Gray, and I'm from Centerville, Georgia. Great. She got it off safety. Centerville's a real small town, so almost everybody knows, like, everybody. Uh, they just saw Gray. She's a blur. Nice heads. Better defense. I'm really, like, a role model, especially, like, female-wise. I'm the first WNBA player from my hometown, so I just set an example to all, like, the, the younger generation. I would say, like, most importantly, I'm representing my mom and my dad. Just seeing them sacrifice so much for me when they could be doing something else, but they was able to cater to my needs. So most importantly, I really play for my parents because they just sacrifice so much for me. set up Gabe Vincent and he drops that in and Precious Achua here's a Kogi with the shot clock at 10 Josh Kogi hanging firing and dropping it in and Durant with the fadeaway elbow jumper and you can't you cannot you just hope he misses you're not going to defend that love Gabe Vincent the way he's improved over time G League coming off injuries Near turnover, Tatum recovers. It. Tatum, yes. four of nine. Three threes. Nakogi all the way to the iron to flip it home. Oh, yeah, he is a... A lot of people in that USA training camp are anxious to see him. Damian Lillard dropping in the three. In the NBA for multiple years. Caleb Agata. Yep. Like you said, you're, you're scoring in a high-level international league. League Player of the Year. So Tatum with an ISO. Epeudo didn't come, and they will flip it up and in and count the basket. <laughs> a few guys out here that can go for 50 <laughs> on this USA team. That's for sure. <laughs> Beautiful drive and finish. And How right about now, this guy? I tell you, Caleb Agata. <laughs> hey, Mike Brown's look. It's a great. It's great to see a kid that can come out of nowhere like this. Levine had the big Udo switched on him and yes. took him right to the bucket. I'll say this, Bob. I think Levine and Jeremy Grant. Is convinced that he's certainly capable. Well, they they look the part. I'm impressed with them. Mike Brown's done a really good job. Zach Levine. Is it different? 23-9 versus 21. A little different than the 48-minute NBA game. Lillard for deep. Too easy. Hey, you can cross the international <laughs> date line. Credit those guys. Skill level is high. Gabe Vincent. Nice. Beautiful pass yes. to Noamu. Yep. The draw and kick. And you talk about.
halftime as we get ready for the second half. And Fran Frischella said at the beginning of the game, he thought Nigeria would play well based on their pregame. How, how did you just extrapolate that? They they looked like, you know, you got a, a former NBA coach of the year, Mike Brown. You've done 10,000 NBA games. Not that many, but close. <laughs> and when we watched the warm-up, they looked like a professional organization. Everything was to the T. That impressed me, and they played with that kind of confidence in the first half. For the U.S., it looked like guys wanted to defer maybe a little too much because they're just feeling each other out. They're all superstars on their own teams, and this feeling out process will continue this week in Las Vegas. I think for both coaches, they're going to appreciate that it's a high-level game because you get the most out of that. If it was ragtag or a lot of fouls, and, and I thought both teams would be pleased with some good stretches of play. Oh, without a question. Mike Brown's got to be ecstatic, but now can they give it give it 20 more minutes of the same level of play? Jason Tainab out of bio with Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, and Damian Lillard for the United States. This is KD. This is the three there, but out of bio, another opportunity. And Idris out of bio, but like you it. could call him Bam <laughs> as he acquired that name as a child. Was it his mother like the Flintstones, it, right? It, it absolutely is yep. true. Bam Bam. Well, little, little did she know that Idris would Bam grow up to be an incredibly large, skilled, incredibly athletic person at 6'9", 255. But did you see a Kentucky this all-around skill level for him translating to the NBA? You know, I did. And the reason is John Calipari did a great job with this kid. He taught him to play the game, the effort defensively, the rebounding, the running the floor. And later on in his one year at Kentucky, he started to do those things. And the same thing's happening in Miami. Eric Spolster made him a defensive player, a rim runner, and now they're making him into a playmaking big, which I love. Gabe Minson, Ike Nwamu, with Josh Kogi, Precious Achua, and KZ Akpala for Nigeria to begin the half. And Nwamu missing off iron there. The defense of Durant right there, that shows you the two-way play you need in international ball. Kevin's extra effort forced that miss, and that'll get Tatum to the line. Is it... People think it's all about scoring. If you want to lead and yeah. you want to win another gold medal, you've got to be that kind of two-way player. That extra effort was amazing because initially you would think that Vincent has an easy shot so KD doesn't give up Perfect. on the contest. Perfect. And, and the greatest thing about Kevin Durant, we said this in the open, is how much he loves the game of basketball. And a big factor in why this team is put together the way it is is because Kevin Durant decided he wanted to play in the Olympics one more time, yeah. and everybody else raised their hand. Well, the thing is, is Carmelo has three golds, and Kevin could have three golds. Durant also will end up being the all-time leading scorer and leader in Olympic history. When you have Jerry West and Michael Jordan and LeBron James uh, being number one in that list as a U.S. male athlete, it's pretty impressive. It is. So a Kogi again. An off-guard defender for the T-Wolves, having to kind of initiate here for Nigeria. Nwamu all the way to the iron. Yeah, he's been impressive. Your team Caleb Agata and Ike Nwamu, they've got some swing guys that really can score. Lillard, that's a warm-up three. And NBA guys don't miss those. Well, and a good delivery by Kevin Durant. He went cross-court because he saw Lillard with the daylight. Paula looking for Achua out at the elbow. A little two-man action here, but if you're going to pick on Durant and Adebayo, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> and KD with the steal beautifully. Good job of switching right there. Good effort. Durant an open three. Rattled that out. Nakogi with the rebound. To install offenses in a short period of time is... Basketball, the same language, and there's pet plays that guys all know from different teams. Yes, and you know when you see it the most, you yourself, is when guys get traded from yeah. one team to another. Right. What do you call that play? Yeah, exactly. Floppy, you know, yeah. horns, horns, horns down. Up. Yep. Yep. It's a, so they got the nomenclature <laughs> down. Now it's the chemistry which is forming. 7.56 remaining in the third in the United States, up seven.
for United States teams to come together, it's camaraderie, chemistry, and cohesion. And in the two-man game and the different actions they run, that's what Greg Popovich is instilling. And also seeing who plays well off each other. Yeah, exactly. And we know these guys, although they're great offensive players, we know they're going to be unselfish, but it's a matter of just building that trust and chemistry. And there you see the four, the ball movement. Four of the five offensive players for Team USA handled the ball. And Kevin Durant giving it up and finding a guy that makes a lot of those. Dane Willard. So Lillard. The drop pass to Adebayo, nice. and then the roll to Beal. Yep. A little tic-tac-toe, yep. nicely done. That's another one of those 45-degree cuts we talked about. And great footwork by Bam Adebayo on what we call a short roll. And Adebayo and Draymond Green are great passers after yes. they roll, which makes them doubly dangerous. Well, I, th I, think, I think Draymond's the best in the league at that. Went off of Akpala right to Gabe Vincent. Shot clock at three. A Kogi from deep and well contested by Tatum. This is great now. Watch the short roll in the catch. Right there, hit him. And then watch the cut from the weak side. That's what we call a 45 degree cut because it's 45 degrees from where he is to the basket, but the short roll is great. This is the best sign after Zach Levine tweaked the ankle. The fact that he'd come back and play really is exciting because Jerry Colangelo at halftime, you could tell there was some yes. trepidation. Yep. Millard again. An off iron, and here comes Duwamu out of the pack. Nigeria has never walked it up. They have pushed it at every opportunity, and Jay Vincent strokes another three. Well, the theory behind that is if we have to go, if we have to play against that length in the half court, like Durant, like Levine, we got to push it and run and get those kind of shots that Gabe Vincent's been knocking down all night. Levine with the step back, rattled that out, or Chua with the rebound, and you hit on a friend going against a set U.S. defense, that can be a problem. Not, not smart, and Mike told us yesterday, we are going to run. Vincent, Durant respecting that three. Precious Achua, they'll dare him, and he hits a triple. How about that? And again, he hit it on his Miami Heat teammate, Bam Adebayo. Durant turned and fade, and for Vincent, that's a win. You just hope Kevin missed. Hey, he did. I played he did. good D. He's not going to contest it at his length. Nwamu. And the threes for Nigeria have been really a story for the first couple minutes of the ball game, and they've tied it up. This is impressive. I, we knew they would be well coached, but uh, the effort, the energy, the athleticism, and the togetherness has been impressive. And a Kogi. That time Gabe Vincent nearly had that. Get it inside, and bam, out of bio, rings the register plus the foul. Again, good ball movement right there. Passing up a good shot for a better shot for a great shot that dunked by Bam at the rim. So for Nigeria, when you're staying with the United States, you can't just trade baskets. You got to come up with some stops, but then you got to run it back. There's seven of 10 and seven of 18 on threes. That's more than representative. Oh, no question. And and I just love the confidence they're playing with. Even Precious Achua, not a great shooter, but capable, knocking it down. Vincent has been on fire all night. And watch this just catch and shoot right there. So now for Precious Achua, his parents are Pentecostal ministers. So his two brothers are God's gift and promise. And his sisters are grace and peace. And his first name is Precious. And, uh, and, and I will just say for the Achua family with Donatus and Eunice, they, they have knocked it out of the park in naming their children. Well, God's gift was a really good player at St. John's. Precious came over in eighth grade. And this is what I want to show you, Bob. That is a reasonable uh, opportunity for Nigeria to do something no African team has ever done, which is get out of pool play. Yes, Australia, worthy of maybe winning a medal. Germany, Bo Wagner. Italy, Danilo Gallinari. But the way we're watching this Nigeria team tonight, you're going to see them. I'm going to see them in Tokyo. I'm impressed. Yeah, I really think that this tournament is going to be played at such a high level because all the qualifying tournaments, the last four, the home countries lost. Canada lost. You had Lithuania lose. You had Croatia lose. You had Serbia lose. So if there's any kind of teams that are on a roll, 
you got to give it up for Italy and the Czech Republic and Slovenia with Luka Doncic. Uh, you know, Greg Popovich said yesterday, Luka, Luka Doncic and four hard-playing guys can cause people problems in Tokyo. Well, Steve Kerr <laughs> would say, along with John Paxson, What's the greatest backcourt ever? Michael Jordan and anybody. Yes. You know, yeah. same, same, you know, same type of thing. You know, Slovenia, for ACC fans, has a kid who's a naturalized citizen, Mike Tobey. Yes. A big kid who can shoot the, the center and he rolls. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And he's been very effective for that Slovenia team. And you know who really loves Mike Tobey? Play-by-play guys. Because the pronunciation is easy for Slovenian players. Mike Tobey is really easy. I'll take it. You don't want to say Jakalakovic? It's... <laughs> For Lithuania, once Sharuna Shasakevich is oh, retired, I was yes. really happy. Lepa Yudo back in. And Vincent. Hey. That's the eighth made three for Nigeria. This guy, we, we talked about him earlier. I've always loved his game. The intensity level, he's a leader for this team, and he's knocking down shots. He only shot 31% for the Heat this year, which was unusual. He's a better shooter than that. Draymond Green has checked in to play with Lillard and Levine, Jeremy Grant and Durant. Shot clock down to three. Jeremy Grant had to create something out of nothing. Nearly got his own rebound, but for Nigeria, playing the defense as Chemezi Metu comes the other way. You just see Draymond Green knock that away. He can guard anyone one through five. Well, he may, be, may have to start guarding Gabe Vincent because Gabe Vincent has been on fire. Take a look. Miami Heat's Gabe Vincent, who has worked his way into the NBA. Impressive tonight. There's that matchup. Josh Kogi. I'd say Euro step, but he went back the other way. And Epe Udo setting up Nwamu, rattling that out. And Durant the rebound. Draymond running. And then tied up for a jump ball. This is a good play defensively for younger players. They, they tend to slap or reach. But Kogi just put the vice in, and you have. Alternate possession in international play. You don't have the jump ball after the opening tip. Well, you made the point earlier. Josh Kogi has made his way into the NBA based on that toughness and the defensive ability. Drafted once by Tom Thibodeau in Minnesota for that reason. So he had vice-like grip there. That's good strength. Man, that looked good. <laughs> Vincent was running back. He thought that was in. He's been that hot, but we're even as Durant able to collect himself. Those kind of falls make you hold your breath a little bit. Bob, I told you earlier, uh, Kevin Durant, I worked for Rick Barnes, Coach Kevin Durant in Texas, and the summer before his freshman year, Coach Barnes called me and said, I got the best player in the country. And I said, you mean you got the best freshman in the country? He said, no, I've got the best player in the country. Well, how about that Brooklyn-Milwaukee seven-game series? Yeah. 48 and 49 for KD. The, the best game seven scoring output ever in NBA history. It, you had Harden banged up. He didn't have Kyrie. And Kevin Durant nearly willed his team to the finals. Yes, he did. And to come off the Achilles injury and to play at the level Kevin is playing and then to commit to Team USA speaks to just the pride he has in his game. And also, WNBA, college basketball, NBA. I, I don't know if I've met a player who loves the game more than Kevin Durant. Yeah. Yeah, no, no question. By the way, that ball knocked off the rim. That's that, legal. That is legal in FIBA. The fans not really sure of that rule. Yeah, offense or defense. There's no basket interference and there's no goaltending. I'm curious, there's no defensive three-second violation. So you can camp in a traditional 2-3 zone. Absolutely, and it happens, and it will happen to this team. Take That's a look it. right there. That's it away. Now, you cannot block it on the way down before it hits the rim. Otherwise, we'd be swatting jump shots. But once it hits the rim, it hits the rim. It's a live ball. So Darius Garland is on the select team. He is checked in here because the U.S. is down three bodies that are playing in the finals. Jemeze Metu able to hit the three. Know Darius Garland from the Cleveland Cavaliers and Nigeria on top. This is starting to get interesting. We've already been impressed with Nigeria, but I don't think anybody saw this coming. You see the decision making for Draymond there and the rotation of Levine who cashes it in. You remember at halftime we had him mic'd up and he said, I, I, I make 50 I made 50% of these corner threes this year. He just showed you why. It's 22 feet and shorter, and guys can knock them down. Oh, 
Okoye spinning. That's good defense by Levine. Moved his feet, came up with a steal. Spectacular. Ball on the deck, and you're going to get a foul and not the tie-up. Now, so as the ball moves around and guys have their sweet spots and you know, the mic'd up section showed it. Zach yep. Levine, hey, I love the corner three. That's my shot. And Zach getting after it defensively as well. And, and I really think he's got a chance to be a, a terrific two-way role player for this uh, USA team. Okay, so I'm going to presage this during the free throws. One of the great legends of the Dream Team in Barcelona is in the camp in Monaco, Chuck Daly let the college kids beat the dream team in a little scrimmage for about 20 minutes. Then the next day, the college kids didn't score for the first 12 minutes, and that was it. That's right. Greg Popovich doesn't want to have a loss to Nigeria in an exhibition game to motivate his team. No. We're, we're way beyond that in 2021. And so for the United States, any time they get beaten internationally, it's a huge deal. And no. they, don't, they don't want to deal with that. No, it, you know, but I thought it was prescient that Jerry Colangelo told us at halftime that he was really impressed with this Nigeria. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you said it from the moment they took the court and the warm-ups and the organization and the way they've gone about it. It's a credit to Mike Brown and a credit to these players. That's an, an offensive foul. As you had the illegal screen set on the, the elbow and Caleb Bagata, who's normally popping out for that screen. Exactly. Got he's not a used too to physical. Screening. Yeah, and he's not used to screening. You lead the uh, Israeli Winter League in scoring, they're usually screening for you. Nigeria, a country of 200 million people, and the pride that they have in the D Tigers, they, they would love to see them be the first African country to win a medal in the Olympics. Coming upon the two-minute mark here in the third. U.S. clinging to the two-point lead. There's Caleb Agata rolling it up and in. You know what I loved about that? Epe Udo was right there at the rim because he was allowed to touch that ball and tip it in. But Agata's been really impressive. 26 years old from Canada, Canadian-Nigerian. Zach Levine, the air ball as Udo played the defense. Koye pushed it the other way. As they met to another three. You look at it, got a slice in for the rebound. Yeah, right now, they're out hustling Team USA. They played 14 guys. They should be a little fresher. Oh, he double dribbled. Garland got away with it. Jeremy Grant, tough take inside and well defended at the iron. But the game kind of hanging there, even at 60. Shorter international game with only 10 minute quarters. If you're the underdog, you just want to hang in the contest, and they've done that. Garland commits the foul. Good ball movement, and there you see Caleb Agata driving down the lane. Former University of Ottawa star. Most of those Canadian kids migrate south to the NCAA, but they have good basketball in CIS. Well, you mentioned that he led the Israeli league in scoring, and so you get into that kind of rhythm like, all right, you need me to be a scorer on this team? That's my role. And Agata has it now. Drop it to Metu. Draymond met him up top. <laughs> Draymond said something to him about it. Jeremy Grant flipping it up and in. Yep. There's the end-to-end -end play, the defense triggering the fast break. Yeah, but I think those three guys, Grant, Levine, and Green, are going to be a big factor defensively. By the way, Sadiq Bay in now for Team USA, the outstanding young player from the Pistons. Another select player. Well, so, you, you've seen this for uh, about a decade. The, the defensive player of the year a couple years ago, first team all defense this year. And Day Day, Draymond Green up top meeting Chemezi Metu. And let me remind you who I am defensively. That's what he had to say. And he, he is one of the most incredible defenders, whether it's Kawhi, Draymond, Rudy Gobert, is the elite of the elite in our game. Chemezi Metu. Boy, so denied it. at the iron, he steps out to the yeah. three-point line, and Nigeria has the lead. I did not see that when he played at USC. He was more of a back-to-the-basket guy. Draymond will pick up the foul. I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you think Draymond will ultimately be a Naismith Hall of Fame? Absolutely, because 
Remember, the Basketball Hall of Fame takes your collegiate career, your international career, and your NBA career. So he's got a gold medal already. He's got three championships. He's a three-time All-Star. He's <laughs> He didn't have a bad career with Izzo at Michigan no, State. He's pretty good. The, the resume is long. <laughs> Straight out of Saginaw. He also, Steve Kerr has said Draymond Green is the heartbeat of yes. the Warriors. Now, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and Kevin Durant, were they were the talent in the elite. But this is the heartbeat. He is the motor. Do you know that he once committed to the University of Kentucky and Tubby Smith? I did not know that. When Tubby Smith left Kentucky, Izzo, my, my buddy Tom Izzo, realizing the mistake of his ways, said, we got a scholarship for you. I, I, that, that was a great story. I did not <laughs> yes. know that. Yep. I'm glad the Saginaw, Michigan native stayed. The final six seconds of the third. I got it from deep, and he hits oh, a three. He's making some money tonight. I tell you, Garland oh, man. hit the deck. And so <laughs> we will head into the fourth quarter with Nigeria up 66-64. Oh, man. The Cha -ching. United States is showing stretches of good basketball, but the D Tigers have come with some bites. Oh, man. This kid's going to be in the summer league in the NBA, so remember the name, Caleb Agata. I don't think you could have scripted a better three quarters. You're playing 14 guys and the level of play for Team Nigeria has been fantastic. I, you know, the one thing that I, our guys have been giving us from day one is the effort. The effort level has been tremendous. And, and if we give an effort and try to play fast, we haven't played as fast as we're capable of, uh, then, then good things can happen. So I'm excited with the guys uh, right now. Mike, your pregame warm-up looked like an NBA pregame warm-up. It really did. Very organized. Your kids were locked in. What uh, what do you like about what they're doing over three quarters? You know what? They're trying to play for one another. You know, it, you know, we, we don't necessarily have the scores that obviously USA has. And so we got to score by committee. Not only do we have to score by committee, but we have to use our length, our athleticism to get up in, in guys' chests. And if we foul, we foul. But uh, I, I, I love the effort. I love the focus. And I love that we're playing for one another. Hopefully we can do it for one more quarter. Thanks for stopping, Coach. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, guys. An early foul after Garland turned it over. Now, Jerry Colangelo said Nigeria has really improved. I want to put this in perspective. In the 2012 Olympics, the United States beat Nigeria 156 to 73. Okay, and, and that so, was a, that was the that was the uh, mellow. That was the Anthony, record setter. Anthony coming out party. Now that that team did not have, an, you know, Ike Diago was their one NBA player. 
We have multiple NBA players on this team, Nigeria, but in nine years, that they have come a long way. Melo had 37 in that game, was yep. the Olympic record. You know, Fitz, I, I think... It's an offensive foul on Metu, yeah. and so little, Nigeria turns it over. Yeah, a little hook right there. I think if you're the other 10 teams in this Olympic tournament, you are going to be blown away by what you see on tape tonight. Because we don't know what's going to happen in the next nine minutes, but I know this. This team is way better than that team that you saw in London. Well, the other thing, too, is Team USA has played at a high level. There have been a lot of good Team USA plays as Grant misses the corner three. And it's a beautiful play by Sadiq Bey. And dropping it into Levine to lay it up and in. Well, that's what Sadiq Bey did at Villanova, and that's what he did this year for Troy Weavers. Pistons, who's uh, here tonight watching... Jaleel Okafor, who I believe is injured. That's why we haven't seen Jaleel just yet. Well, Jaleel had a, a family member pass away, yeah, yep. so he's been away at the services the past week, and Mike didn't want to put him at an injury risk. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what, Caleb Okada. Yep. I mean, have a coming out party. You know, I, you know, my buddy Roland Barrett up there in Canada, I don't think they necessarily missed on this kid. But he could have gone and played for the Canadian team, too. I just don't think a lot of people know how good he's gotten. They're not getting Israeli league games. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, do. they don't have synergy. <laughs> Everybody has synergy. Shot clock at eight. Raymond thought about playing a little bully ball. Now directing traffic as Garland floating it up and in. Tough finish. Yes. Darius Garland. We have a couple select team players playing with Grant Green and Levine. And Sadiq Bey and Darius Garland. But you got an eight minute ball game even at 68. Coaches keep track of deflections. That will be Nigeria ball with Zach Levine. Good ball pressure there. Watch this drive right here high off the glass over the shot blocker by the youngster from Vanderbilt and the Cleveland Cavs, Darius Garland, whose dad played Winston in Garland. NBA. Yep, Winston for the Warriors, right? He did. He was a warrior. This made me feel really old there. Thanks <laughs> for that, friend. Caleb Bagata is fouled on the drive before the shot. Hey, I want to take you back to the 2020 NBA draft. You ready? Here are the kids with Nigerian roots. Isaac Okoro, Anyeka Akangwu, fifth and sixth picks. How about Precious Achua? Yudoka Azubuki, first round pick of the Jazz. Neat Zeke Najali. Desmond Bain could have been playing. For Memphis. Daniel Aturo. Jordan Moore, who will be on this team, he's now in with the Milwaukee Bucks, and this team almost had Monte Morris as its point guard, but Monte was injured late in the year. But you're talking nine guys in one draft yep. with Nigerian lineage. Stanley Okoye, good contest by Sadiq Bey. Rebound battle still loose and batted back out. So Nigeria, another opportunity. Regbu unable to finish. Goodness, what a follow. Stanley Okoye up top. And then Draymond will draw the blocking foul. Well, you think Nigeria wants to win this game? And you know, I would say this, Bob, in the last, maybe maybe since the middle of the third quarter to this point, they are outworking Team USA. This is all effort plays right now. Loose balls, 50-50 balls. Watch the attack of the rim. And then no block out right here and the finish by Stanley Okoye. And so now Durant and Damian Lillard coming back in. I really think in crunch time, Lillard, Durant, Tatum, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal. I got five bucket getters when it really matters. Yeah. But they've got to get Booker to Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> In one piece. Draymond really improved his free throwing this year. Pushed it up near 80%. And internationally, you've got to make these. Yes. And he did. Dropped in two there. We're even at 70 now. There's Draymond out top. And there's, there's the defense with the shot clock at seven. Got to go. Mie Oni. And he will get the foul on Durant. But you want to talk about guarding someone one through five. Yes. Draymond Green just put on a clinic. Watch what he does here at the end. He keeps his body away from the driver. 
He's going to get his body off of him and reaches back with verticality. That's a great play. Yeah, You've OB, seen that a few times. Obi Emigano <laughs> says no one in Spain or France guards like that. You see that about ten times a night. You're spoiled. Then guard Giannis and then, <laughs> then go guard Jeff T. How about the I know. finish inside? He, Caleb, Caleb <laughs> Lagana is developing a fan base here in Vegas. Let me tell you something. Uh, Draymond better start guarding him because this kid is making money. I don't know. Uh, you know, Beersheba, the team he played for in Israel, is so long, folks, because he's out of there. Oh, Bradley Beal did everything but the finish. Here comes Agata. Caleb got again, and Draymond got him. <laughs> I told you he's got to be guarding him. Push ahead to Lillard. You have six and a half left with the U.S. down a deuce. Tatum. Right now you just get the sense Tatum, Beal, Lillard, and Durant with Draymond at the five. This might be kind of the closing unit here. Well, this is a good lesson for Team USA because they have to play now. Catch and shoot three dropped in. Mie Oni. The three point shooting for Nigeria has been spectacular. Absolutely. They love Mie Oni in Utah. Still developing. 17 threes for the D Tigers. Durant on the baseline, and Durant is fouled. Caleb, Caleb Agata just said to himself, I just fouled Kevin Durant. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Watch this shooting right here. Catch and shoot. Mie Oni, former Ivy League Player of the Year. Did not have a Division I scholarship coming out of high school in L.A. Went to prep school. And James Jones, who, by the way, is uh, helping Jamie Dixon coach in Latvia. USA under-19 team will play for the goal tomorrow. Well, Mie Oni really suffered academically as he went to <laughs> Yale. <laughs> it yes. seemed to work out okay. You know, he was heading to Williams College because, and then his family couldn't afford the Williams College tuition. So somebody said, well, why don't you just go to prep school and maybe you'll earn a scholarship. And although the Ivy League doesn't give scholarships, they do give need-based aid. And that young man had three great years for the Elis. So Durant, an 88% career free thrower, hits them both, and it's a one-point game. Koye dropping it off. It's the only who just hit that last three. Extra step. Good defense by Beal. Knocked away. Beal getting on the deck and then getting it to Durant. You don't want to hold it with that alternate possession. And then KD is fouled. Remember, after the opening tip, you don't have jump balls, and so that possession arrow becomes pretty critical. Well, you're, you're not used to that if you play in the NBA, but watch the effort here. You see Jason Tatum, and this is just a tremendous effort by Bradley Beal, who told Jerry Colangelo, I want to be a defensive stopper. And Kobe Bryant, the late, great Kobe Bryant, said the same thing back in 2008. That one knocked away. It'll still remain. Now, Think of Jason Tatum wearing Kobe's number 10. In the Olympics, the numbers are different. And Tatum is wearing one of the most hallowed Team USA jerseys there is. Can I tell you a great story about Kobe Bryant in the Olympics? Tony Ronzoni was the scout for that team. And he put together a clip of Leandro Barbosa scoring on Kobe in the NBA. And they were playing Brazil. And he showed Kobe the tape. Kobe was upset. Coach K said... He gave the lineup matchups, and Kobe wasn't guarding Barbosa. He said, Coach K, I got Barbosa. And that's the kind of tone he set for that USA team that won the gold back in 2008. Inside five minutes, Nigeria with a one-point lead in the ball. Seven lead changes, three ties. Vaoni having it knocked away, and it's still Nigeria ball with four to shoot. Why does this not feel like an exhibition? 4.46 left in a game that seems like it matters to both teams.
Kendrick. They comfortable. They really dope too. When the golden knees gonna be fine. Olympic basketball and NBC Sports brought to you by Nike. Nike, play new. And we have something really special happening on a Saturday night in Las Vegas where it's not just the weather that's only hot. <laughs> Nigeria is 17 of 36 on threes. And Kayla Bagata, Gabe Vincent, and friends have Nigeria poised for an historic upset. Well, no fear factor from this, the Tigers team, which as you mentioned, Bob, just 11 years ago, was beaten by a thousand in London, it seemed that way. But I love the poise of this team, and around the world right now, people are gonna be talking about this game, win or lose, for Nigeria. So 4.46 left, only four to shoot here. Inbound to Benege with a shot clock at one. And the U.S., remember, you play through the 24-second violation on the air ball. Durant, off back iron, and you're not stopping it. You just hope he misses, and it was a little strong. Bayudo on the kick out. Catch and shoot three. Off back iron. Right now, running back. Thinking of Red Goose, he really wanted that three. And Lillard trying to answer. He got a foul on the rebound as Adebayo went for the board beyond the United States. I think what we're going to find out from the U.S. right now, this is an exhibition game, but we are going to find out who is actually going to take over this game because there's guys out there in Tatum and Lillard and KD that can certainly do that. And don't forget Bradley Beal. So four minutes of crunch time with Nigeria up one with the ball. Jime Moniki, Mie Oni. Catch and shoot. They've been trying to live at the three-point line right now, but Benege missing there. I'm, I'm interested right here to see where USA goes when they need a basket. Bradley Beal sizes up Benege. Shot clock at 10. Durant again. So KD off back iron, off front iron. So they've gone to Durant twice. And Oni will drop in a three. So it's a two possession game. KD is two of 10 in the game. 18 made threes for Nigeria. I don't mean to belabor this, Bob. We might be watching history right now. Durant floating, make it two of 11. And Mike Brown still wants him to run, even though they've got the lead. Only was a little hesitant to push. Three minutes here. The United States need to dig in defensively. Regbu with the shot clock at seven. And Durant had the block, but it will be called for the foul. And so free throws coming for the D Tigers. Mike Oregbu plays in France. He went to Washington State collegiately. He was undrafted in 2017. This will be his first Olympics. I haven't had a lot of fouls in the game. It's the story is Nigeria's three-point shooting and yep. the fact that KD's been a little cold. Yep. Yeah, but two for 10, I believe. A two for 11 two on that last shot. That's right, yeah. So if the U.S. is going to avoid a monumental upset, they've got work to do in the final 253. Lillard will hear the whistle and get to the line. They said two straight screens for Dave from midcourt to get him going to the basket and get to the line. That's what he's going to do. So the United States timeout, 246, down six. Lillard free throws coming. This has been an incredible performance by Nigeria. And they have taken 
USA all the way to the finish line. Nigeria's largest lead of the game is right now at six. And the United States have scuffled offensively. It's just opportunities have gone astray. Nigeria took the lead with four seconds left at the end of three, and they've held the lead throughout the fourth quarter. Yep, yeah, in USA, you, you get shots like that for Kevin Durant, usually knocking them down, not tonight. And all of a sudden, we're two minutes and 46 seconds away from what would be for the continent of Africa from a basketball standpoint in the country of Nigeria, a huge, huge statement. Lillard dropping in the free throw. Now the United States will play Australia on Monday. They will play Argentina on Tuesday. Australia again Friday and then Spain. So they have a five game exhibition sequence. Lillard missed the second free throw and then was fouled after he got the rebound. Another opportunity here. In a normal NBA night that you're used to seeing, two minutes and 44 seconds, a team can score 16 points. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It just doesn't feel that way right now. We'll see what happens, but uh, USA certainly has that firepower. It's a great crowd here, and there's almost a pensive feeling yep. on are we watching something monumental as Lillard drops in the free throw. Damian Lillard, his first Olympics, the six-time All-Star, the 89% career free thrower. He drops them both in, and that will get Draymond Green into the game. So a single possession ball game. And if you're Nigeria, you're looking at the clock, and 243 is a long time. <laughs> it sure is. And now we, we've talked about how well they pushed the ball tonight. Now they're going to have to execute in the half court. So a red blue holding, Zach Levine on him, shot clock at 15. Oh, he tried to get it into the post, couldn't do it. Good defense. On the kick out, a red blue open three, and he got it! The 20th three of the night for Nigeria. Great drive and kick by Benajay, and a red blue got caught sneaking into the corner. Rant on the kick out, Lillard finding Tatum. And Tatum all the way to the iron, it hung on iron and fell off. Six point lead in the ball as we wind down to two minutes. And FAU do a lot of experience for a big guy who can handle it. Jimmy Moniki dropping it off to a red boot. Shot clock down to seven. And that ball out of bounds off the United States. The remain Nigeria ball with seven to shoot. Well, this has been the story of the night the drive, the kick, and knocking down the deep ball. The 20th three. And then this is the other story, Bob. Missed opportunities by Team USA. Seven seconds on the shot clock. 60 of their 83 points coming from beyond the arc. At least six to shoot. 
A step back three and rattles in. And so Michael Benege gives Nigeria their largest lead with only 104 seconds left in the game. Yeah, great defense too, big shot. Stay tuned folks, this is historic. Rand avoided the turnover, his three and answer. <laughs> KD, his first three of the night. Five point game. Oniki denied by Durant, and he touched it last. Good ball movement. This is more like the Kevin Durant that we know. So Caleb Agata will check in. He's been the leading scorer for Nigeria. 11 to shoot, a minute 20 left. Five point lead in the ball for the D Tigers. Bayudo holding. Aregbu hit the corner three. Buries another one. The three point shooting for Nigeria. Scintillating. Durant answers with a three. Five point game of the one minute mark. USA, this is the biggest stop of the game. They need to pitch a shutout for the United States. Vincent holding, leading clock with a shot clock at seven. Aregu's hit the two big threes. Tremont knocked it away. Lillard push ahead. Durant's in full flight to lay it up and out, but draw the foul. A terrific hands by Draymond because it looked like Aregu was about to get to the rim. Take a look right here. And KD with a chance to cut this lead. So 43.6 left, down five. Durant, two free throws coming. Durant had been 0 for 3, had been 2 for 11. He buries the last two threes. He's fouled here on the drive. And Rainbow's in the free throw. Seven-time All-Star, the four-time scoring champ, two-time Finals MVP, MVP of the league, and he makes them both. Single possession game, 40 ticks left. Red Bull on Draymond Green. Vincent comes to get it, faces up on Lillard. Shot clock down to seven. Gabe Vincent on the drive. Tatum stepped in and knocked it away. Still Nigeria ball with four to shoot. Mike Brown's got two timeouts. He can use it because it's a dead ball. Is he going to take it? And he will use a timeout yep. right now. Nigeria. Protecting the three-point lead. Only four to shoot with 23.2 left. People know about the United States and Russia in hockey. This is the basketball version tonight. Hi, I'm Kelsey Plum, and I'm from Poway, California. Plum, crossed her, and she sauced her. When I put on the jersey, first of all, I think I represent Obviously, the U.S., you know, it's a lot bigger than just me. It's really about the name on the front, not the back. Um, I represent young girls out there that want to be me someday. So I think that there's a lot of groups that I try to uh, put forth uh, that effort intensity and the performance level. So, you know, I try to make them proud. Up three, 23.2 left, four to shoot for the guys in green. Nigeria in a single possession game. This will be a huge play coming out of the timeout for Mike Brown. I'm excited to see what they run to get the, 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 the look. 
And remember, Bob, if USA can get a stop, do they go for the three or do they get a quick two? FAU deal will be involved some way in this play. Just watch. Caleb Agata will inbound with Udo, Aregbu, Casey Akpala, and Gabe Vincent. Still looking, looking. They get it to Epe Udo. His wing jumper off iron. Draymond Green the rebound. Team USA needs a three to tie, and they will foul Durant. Now, they're over the limit, so this will be free throws with 16.5. Yep, and that was a foul by design by K. Vincent. He was not going to give up the three ball to Durant. He's going to make him earn it at the foul line. And now Team USA, if Durant makes both, is going to have to press and foul. So what is interesting is with the threes made by Nigeria at 21, they're only four of six free throwing. The United States is 24 of 29. So the two different lines, three-point line one, free throw line the other. Each team has a timeout remaining. Durant makes it a one-point game. Pressure, try to steal it, and then you're going to have to foul quickly. 16.5. Nigeria clinging to the one-point lead. Vincent's got it in the backcourt. Draymond Green will foul him there with 13.2. USA is going to force Gabe Vincent to make two, but remember, if they're up three, Nigeria will come right back and foul USA again. It's an 87% free thrower with the Miami Heat. And internationally, you're right. If he makes a both, they don't give up threes internationally. They foul all the time protecting the three-point lead. So Vincent is one of two free-throwing tonight. Nigeria's only attempted six free-throws in the game. And drops it in. What a night this kid's had. If you're... Eric Spolster and Pat Riley, you have to love this kid's competitiveness. Two-point lead with one more free throw coming. Vincent hits them both. Back to the three-point advantage. And so Greg Popovich will use the United States' final timeout. With 13.2, they want to attempt a three, but this is where, internationally, they usually foul. Right, but because you can advance the ball in FIBA play, if you're Greg Popovich and you see this, Bob, in the NBA, even though there's 13 seconds to go, you can draw up a catch-and-shoot play in that half-court area where the Nigerian team is thinking, do we foul a guy who's in the act of shooting? So it's a very unique situation for both coaches right now which is why Greg Popovich advanced the ball to the timeline. So 13.2, and the mission is clear for the United States. They need a three, and in a catch and shoot variety, rather than turn your back and allow a foul to be applied. you got to be ready to be in the motion to shoot it. So Lillard, Durant, Tatum, Zach Levine, so many great scores and three-point shooters. The other thing is knowing that Nigeria knows that as well, you can get a quick two right here and play the foul game again and go down one instead of a quick desperation shot. Also, too, as great a free thrower as Durant and Lillard are, if you pump fake and the guy landed on you, you could shoot three free throws. That's true, too. We got a lot going on here, There's my friend. There's a lot of drama in the <laughs> final 13.2. They will inbound right in front of Kevin Durant's mom, Wanda, right on the sideline. And it's Lillard to inbound. Three-point line has been the difference in the game. Casey Akpala guarding Kevin Durant, the biggest possession of his career. Now, Mike Brown was trying to substitute, and this substitution will be allowed take Gabe Vincent out of the game and put in Chime Moniki. So Lillard, Durant with Draymond and Tatum and Zach Levine. They don't apply a foul yet. Eight seconds left. A foul Down now. to seven. 
They're looking for Levine at five. They needed three, and there's the foul. So that was the worst of every world for the United States. They burned 10 seconds, and then the, th the foul was applied. Absolutely. They would have been better off catching and going to the basket if they were not going to shoot the three. And this now becomes the most important three and a half seconds, maybe in the history of basketball in the continent of Africa. So now, if you're Levine, do you make the first free throw and you have to miss the second intentionally? You have to miss it intentionally because I believe they are out of timeouts. So they can't advance from the from the full court on free throws made by Nigeria. Now what's interesting is on a missed free throw, you can cram it in. There's no basket interference offensively. Hey, Levine missed the first. That means he's going to have to miss this free throw. And you see Bam Adebayo is trying to come into the game, but by rule he cannot until the end of the second free throw. You've so got to out. miss this free throw and somehow get a three. There's the missed free throw. Achua pulls the rebound. And with 1.4, you're going to have Nigeria with the ball and the lead and Achua shooting free throws. This is amazing. You know, the first quarter, we were impressed with the effort. The second quarter, we were impressed with the shooting. The third quarter, we were impressed with the poise. And right now, Bob, I'm just impressed. I don't think in this exhibition season or the Tokyo tournament, you would thought the United States would be outscored by 30 points from the three-point line in any game. But the 20 made threes by Nigeria for only 10 for the United States. Now, Achua misses the free throw. The U.S. is out of timeouts. If he makes one, it's over. It becomes a two-possession game. If he misses, you're going to need a 90-foot heave. Missed them both. The final heave from midcourt and beyond, and Nigeria has upset the United States in an exhibition game, 90 to 87. And for that national team, that is the biggest win in the country's history, and to your point, maybe the continent of Africa for any nation. Bob, you nine years ago in London, you saw it firsthand. What was it, 70 plus points? It was 156 to 73 in the 2012 Olympics in London, the US over Nigeria. Here we are nine years later, and Mike Brown has led Nigeria to a victory over the United States. This will be a constructive eye-opener for Team USA. There's no question. Give Nigeria credit for an amazing effort. But this could be, this will be a wake-up call for Team USA. And they will look at the United States struggling a bit offensively. But really, it's the brilliance of Nigeria's three-point shooting that must be credited. Yeah. I think a lot of times in sports, we look at a loss as to how did that team stumble rather than give praise for the phenomenal performance of the victor? Yeah, and I think the shooting was emblematic of the confidence this team played with from the very beginning of the game. And it shows the longer an underdog hangs in the game, the more belief they develop. And that clearly was the case for Nigeria in the game in the first quarter, in the game at halftime, take the lead at the end of the third and withstand Durant threes and free throws and Lillard free throws to hold them off at the very end. And with a 40 minute game, if this game was eight minutes longer, the United States may have gotten it. But in a 40 minute game, the end comes very quickly. It's over. 40 minutes came quickly and we saw history tonight. Nigeria shoots it at 32 of 73 from the field, but 20 of 42 on threes. The U.S. 26 of 63 from the field, 10 of 24 on threes. And for Mike Brown, who's an assistant coach for the Golden State Warriors, who is a protege of Greg Popovich, a former assistant with the San Antonio Spurs, what an amazing coaching win for him, and what a beginning of the exhibition season for Nigeria. And for the United States, I think they'll be happy they have games Monday and Tuesday. Gabe Vincent got the, the pressure free throws at the end. Can you even put into words what this win means for Nigeria? Everything, man. I mean, it's the start of what we're trying to do this summer. So it's the start of what we're trying to do. So it means the world. Great environment, great competition, great team. Hey, Gabe. 
Yep. Gabe, from the beginning of the game, even before the game warm-ups, you guys looked like a confident, well-prepared team. How much of the Mike Brown influence, you're, you're in the NBA, you know Mike Brown, how yeah. much of his influence is th coming through this whole team? Um, a lot. I mean, Mike's done a great job with us so far. Uh, we've had a good camp so far. We've had to build a new culture, start from the ground up, new plays, new everything. You know, we got a lot of new guys in. So it's been a competitive camp so far. And, and like I said, we're looking forward to more. Mike Brown has talked about you're representing the entire continent of Africa. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I saw your training camp in Oakland. It says the, the future is bright for the green and white. You, you guys feel like Nigeria has 200 million people, but the entire continent, you, you're representing much more than yourselves. Yeah, I mean, it's totally different. You know, playing in the NBA and playing for an organization in a city is different when you're playing for a country. And right now we're representing the continent. And, you know, that's got to it means the world to us. I know it does, and I hope we showed that here tonight. Hey, Gabe, Gabe, you've grinded your way into an NBA career, and tonight you've played like one of the best players in the world. How much confidence did you have getting off to that start and keeping it going for 40 minutes? I mean, it's just all the work that we put in. You know, it's, it's by no mistake uh, what happened here tonight, not just myself, but Caleb Agata. You know, he had a great night, and it's a coming out party for him. He had a great year this summer. Uh, he's going to have a big summer coming ahead. So, Could you feel the, the pressure with – Durant and Lillard and Tatum all coming after you in the last couple minutes after you built the eight-point lead and, and they took it down to the wire and you held them off. Yeah, I mean, we knew what it was. I mean, we've all seen them play at the highest level and make huge shots. Uh, we knew what, come, what came with that and we just had to make plays. I tell you, Gabe, you are very calm and collected for an amazing win that's going to be talked about for quite some time and you were a huge part of it. Congratulations and thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much. Right where we're supposed to be. All right, so Gabe Vincent... Putting Nigeria on the Olympic map. This will be discussed and talked about, and it just made the exhibition season in Vegas feel a lot more important. We'll come back and wrap it up from Mandalay Bay. Nigeria upsets the United States 90 to 87.